What's up, everybody? Today, we've got an awesome story about a wife who wanted an open relationship but now regrets it. My wife and I have been together for 10 years, but married for 8. We met in college and were each other's first and only. I honestly thought we had a unique and beautiful relationship because of that, but it appears that was just me. Some time ago, my wife began working at a new company. At first, she found it difficult to fit in because she's always been reserved, but after encouragement from me, she made friends with a group of girls, some of whom were single, divorced, or dating but not married. At first, I was happy she made friends, but then she started going out for drinks, partying, or some other thing her friends had planned. I became concerned by her change in behavior and tried to talk to her about it, but at the same time didn't want to restrict her in any way. It started to affect her relationship in the bedroom. My wife wasn't one to initiate intimacy, but with her continued going out, she was either too tired or wasn't in the mood. At some point, her company got a new manager, whom my wife and her friends had taken a shining to. She began mentioning him in passing, but it got to a point where she was pointing out how he handled certain problems that didn't seem to be work-related. I questioned her on her fascination with this man, and she brushed off my concerns. She even started asking if I regretted not having more experience with women, to which I said no because she is all I ever needed. I swore I thought for a moment I saw a flash of sadness in her eyes, but she quickly changed the subject. She started mentioning open marriages as a way to spice up our marriage. I was taken aback because my wife has never been this kind of person and, to be honest, not that liberal sexually. At first, I refused and questioned if this had anything to do with the new manager, to which she denied, but said she felt like she missed out, but at the same time didn't want to lose me, so this was a safer option. I wondered if she was playing with fire, then reluctantly and naively agreed. So, we set some rules mainly not to sleep with another person in our home. For a year, my wife goes on dates, has one night stands, then, as if I didn't see it coming, somehow is in some kind of relationship with that manager. I, on the other hand, had a few dates but no one night stands, because it frequently felt wrong to me. My wife would ask if I was fine, but really wouldn't change her behavior. At some point, I felt the love I had for her, that pure, special innocence of marriage, was gone, and it was killing me inside. I ended up going on a date with an amazing woman who migrated over from South Korea. Conversation was effortless, she had the wit of a lightning fast whip crack, and a smile that would make one forget himself. This, of course, led to more dates until we had sex. I honestly never had sex like I had with this woman. I never knew a woman could be so giving and make one feel so desirable. At first, my wife thought it was cute, but as the months went by, she began questioning my relationship with my lover. I promptly pointed out that this was her idea, and even that she was in a relationship with the manager I was concerned about. She was silent. She looked like she wanted to say something but held her tongue. She began coming home early to surprise me with dinner and get the house extra clean. She also started coming to my workplace to drop off lunch and began to initiate intimacy in the bedroom. Honestly, if it wasn't for her opening up our marriage, which I am also to blame for agreeing, all this would have had me jumping for joy. I barely gave into her attempts at intimacy, and when I did, it was simply to get it over with. Something in me towards my wife died, and I could see she felt it too. I asked what brought on this change in her, what was different. The response I got was that, she wants to show me that she loves me and is happy with me. I never intended to, but I burst out laughing. I asked, what about her little group of friends, her manager lover, or her one night stands? She didn't respond that day, and simply went to bed in tears. The next day, I got home to find her waiting for me. She told me, she wants to close our marriage. 
This whole experience was a horrible mistake. She regrets everything and wants us to be the focus of our relationship again. I told her to be honest with me and tell me what inspired all this in the first place. And wouldn't you know it, it was her group of friends that planted the idea because of their numerous sexual exploits. And when her manager came around, he surprisingly supported that lifestyle and encouraged my wife to live free. Apparently, it developed into an emotional affair but only got physical once the marriage opened. Wow, like that makes it better. She described it as being drunk behind the wheel of a speeding car. It was thrilling, intoxicating, but the price of the decision has become too much for her to bear. She sees now that she never needed a comparison and that what we had was truly unique and special. But now, she feels like she murdered our marriage and any chance of a life together. I told her I might not ever be able to see her as my wife again and this made her break down in front of me. I simply held her in silence as she cried until she fell asleep in my arms on the couch. She has since left her job and cut off contact with all her friends and her manager and even told me she's willing to spend the rest of her life making it up to me and work her fingers to the bone to be seen as a wife by me. But I haven't cut contact with my lover. My lover, quite frankly, makes me feel like a man, like I can challenge the world, and my wife hasn't in a while. Truth is, I don't know what to do in this situation. I would love to get the special feeling back, if possible. My lover basically saved me when I was at my lowest. Please help me. Forgot to add, we have our first marriage counseling session in a couple of hours. Not sure how that will go. The therapist seemed nice and experienced. She appeared unbiased and actually eager to help, even though it was our very first session. My wife took it as an opportunity to lay it all out. It seems she confessed that this group of friends made her wonder if she had missed her chance because she was committed to her first boyfriend and had no other experiences that she never had the same adventures. Some of these supposedly amazing women had remember some of whom are divorced, but none are married. The therapist pointed out that this can be and often is detrimental to a marriage due to the difference in mindset. My wife seemed to agree, then added that after the new manager started approaching her, some of these friends encouraged her to see where it goes, that this was a chance for her to explore or discover herself. She obviously felt guilty, so she says, so she never did anything physical until one of the divorced ones suggested an open marriage as the loophole and told her that some couples come out stronger because of it. So, after regrettably, again, so she says, convincing me to open up the marriage, her so-called adventure began. It was intoxicating and blinding, but lacked real substance, not like the kind we built over the years and she started to question her reasons for doing this. She said she could see the hurt in my eyes, but told herself this was an adventure. She said she'll never forgive herself for this, her chance to have an amazing experience, so the gravity of it all never really hit her, until she noticed a change in me. At first, she assumed because I went on dates, I would gradually accept her situation and be okay with it. But that all changed when my lover became a constant appearance in my adventure. Apparently, I started to smile again for no reason, how my eyes would light up when I would get a text message or when I cheerfully left the room to answer a call. She said she suddenly felt a pit in her stomach and started to get many panic attacks for no reason. She went to her friends for advice again, but they said it was a normal reaction for me to have during the adventure. But when the same divorced one who suggested this in the first place said it looks like his lover makes him happy, that's when the reality of it all finally dawned on her and the very real possibility that another woman, and not his wife, gave him joy almost made her pass out. She realized how ridiculous this all was and begged them to help her win me back, but they just told her if she couldn't deal with it, why did she open her marriage in the first place? She knew then and there that these people were toxic and a threat to our marriage and the life we've built. Hence, she's been on a mission to win me back by any means necessary. I, on the other hand, didn't share much, but I did let the counselor know about the situation on my side, with my lover still in the picture. 
to which the counselor said, no resolution could ever be reached, with my lover still in the picture, and suggested we book another appointment after tomorrow. The counselor said, it was unusual for someone to stay with their first this long, and gave the impression that any storm can be weathered. I highly suspect, she wants us to be one of her success stories. Here's the first update so far. I have since moved into an apartment owned by my brother for a ridiculously cheap price. He owns properties and would have let me stay for free, but I refused. That's just a little of what I have uncovered about my wife's behaviors and some unsettling things about her manager during our second session of counseling. I asked some of the questions that some Redditors asked. Number one, if she was sure nothing physical happened before the opening of the marriage. She looked towards the ground and begged me not to make her say it. She said, if she said it, then it would destroy us. But after some pushing, she shared that it wasn't physical, but they touched themselves in front of each other. This douchebag convinced her that, since it wasn't physical, it wasn't technically cheating, and that they were simply enjoying each other's full beauty. I was absolutely floored by this, and she started shaking and hyperventilating. Snot even began flowing from her nostrils, as she cried and apologized to me. At this point, even the counselor was taken aback, and had a look of disbelief. My wife got on her knees and hugged my legs, saying how sorry she was. Number 2. I then asked her, what really changed your view of him? She said, after she started pulling back from the group as a whole, his behavior towards her changed. Then, one evening as she was leaving a meeting, she passed his office, and heard him speaking about her to another male colleague. He said, he was surprised at how easy it was to get her, and how she is living proof, that you can't trust the quiet ones. When the colleague asked if he actually fancied her, his response was that she was a pleasant distraction and that he had absolutely no intention of breaking up with his fiancée. He even added that this was simply to get it out of his system because the only woman who has ever understood him was his fiancée and he didn't want to break up with her. He also mentioned how he felt bad for me, but you snooze, you lose. My wife, upon realizing that she was nothing more than a piece of meat to this man, added by the fact that she betrayed me for a cheap thrill, actually made her suicidal in that moment. She said, she left her workplace and vomited in the parking lot. She also added that her first thoughts were, what have I done? And my name, please forgive me. I'm so sorry. Number 3. I then asked her if she loved him and when it was that she stopped loving me. She looked me dead in the eye, through tears, and said she never stopped loving me, which honestly makes it worse. And that he was just something different. She thought it was love, but now realizes how foolish she was. She squeezed my arm with surprising strength and said, she knows she messed up, but she misses us and the connection we had before all this. She even suggested, we move away and start fresh, just the two of us, just as it was meant to be. I then told her it wouldn't be fair to my lover and that I need time away from her to process all this. It was like she had a meltdown at those words. She started sobbing harder and saying incoherent things. She held on to me as if I was going to disappear. It took some time for both me and the counselor to calm her down. The counselor managed to convince her that maybe time apart could help us heal. Now, I wish I could end the update with just this, but as we got home, I began to pack. My wife got a video call from her laptop. It was one of her former friends, in tears. It turns out that after my wife resigned, this friend and the manager began a fling of their own, but apparently, she had a pregnancy scare, which caused him to basically turn into Dr. Jekyll. To make matters worse, she had a boyfriend, whom she apparently could see a future with. The only reason why she even had a fling was that she was curious about the experience. Funny how that seems to be a trend. Her boyfriend found out because he discovered an email between the two discussing the potential pregnancy, but the manager basically accused her of baby trapping him. Of course, he left her 
and the reason why she made contact is that she was under the impression that my wife managed to save our marriage and was desperately seeking advice. I just turned and left and have been staying in the apartment ever since. Second update. My wife's insane behavior and how it changed us. Some things have happened so far and my decision moving forward. Well, quite a bit has happened. The former friend who had the pregnancy scare was indeed pregnant, but the stress of losing her boyfriend and being humiliated by the affair caused her to lose the baby. She basically turned ballistic, went full scorched earth on the manager. She exposed him to all upper management and his fiancée. I happened to find his fiancée on Facebook, was curious, and this woman is basically the poster child of a pretty, small-town girl based on her profile. She's a special needs teacher, who is a homebody and is very family-oriented. My first thought was, what the hell is he doing messing around with other women, when he's got her at home? Honestly, why men like him end up with women like her is one of the greatest mysteries of life. The former friend actually got in contact with me. She wanted my side of the version of events, because she was collecting evidence against him, but she wanted to do it in person. She already had her COVID test, and so did I, and I agreed. From the moment I saw her face, I knew she was broken. The dark circles under her eyes, and her red-colored irises clearly showed. She didn't get any sleep and was haunted by her own thoughts. She thanked me for agreeing to meet her, and immediately apologized for her role in my wife's adventure. Turns out, her and my wife spoke again, and that's when she learned I had moved out. She didn't shift blame and wanted to take responsibility, hence why she wanted to meet in person. I thanked her for her efforts but asked her why she would go this far. She said, losing both a child and the love of her life changed who she was at the core. She said, she can hardly look in the mirror without feeling disgust and she can hardly sleep because all she sees is her ex's face the day he found out. This woman clearly hated herself and the meeting might have been a form of punishment for her. She tells me, since fraternizing among co-workers is a breach of conduct, and more so, because he was in a position of influence, he will most likely be fired and possibly blacklisted from that field as a whole, but the same may be true for her as well, and she accepted it. She left after getting my side of the story and apologized again. I needed to get a few things from the old place, so I picked a time when I thought my wife wouldn't be home. Unfortunately, she was there, but what surprised me is that she had most of our wedding photos out on the coffee table, as well as others, and she was staring at them. When she noticed me, I could see she was crying. She tried to hug me, but I gently pushed her aside. She tried to offer me lunch, but I told her I wasn't hungry, that I wouldn't be long, just needed a few things before I could proceed. She said, she had something to show me. She pulled out her phone and showed me a message she received two days ago from her former manager who berated her. It was from a new number since she blocked his old one. Apparently, my wife helped her former friend expose him to all relevant parties and he was fuming. She thought by exposing the secret, she was moving its power as well as giving us a fighting chance. I told her, I was glad that she had the courage to do that, but it doesn't change anything between us. I also informed her that I will be stopping marriage counseling, but will do individual counseling instead. This made her sob softly, and she said she understood. I know, I'm supposed to feel either elation of the actions taken or rage because it took this long, but I feel numb towards her. This isn't normal. Hence why I want to address it in individual counseling and not marriage counseling. I have also seen a divorce lawyer at my brother's recommendation, just to be safe. As of now, I'm not really willing to fight for this marriage, and it seems my wife can sense it. Before I left, she tried to initiate intimacy, but when I refused, she yelled and asked, What does my lover do for me that she can't? What does she love her give that she wife can't? She and her voice so loud I'm sure the neighbors heard it, said that whatever it was I wanted, she wife would do it. I shook my head, and told her if she still couldn't tell after all that's happened, 
then it's clear where our marriage is headed and left to hang. If you love this story and crave more tales of love, betrayal, and healing, don't forget to subscribe for more from Cheating Stories.